It's already time for our December plan with me. Follow along this month to create a dial calendar, a holiday wish list, and so much more. Hello, my friends. Welcome back. My name is Shada Campbell, and this is the final plan with me of 2020. Bye, 2020. We're so sad to see you go. <laughs> so today we are focusing on the December plan with me. The birth flower I'm doing is the poinsettia, so that'll kind of be our theme that carries us through. We're doing all kinds of stuff, a dial calendar, a Dutch door cover page, you know the drill. And I just want to give a quick reminder to please subscribe because in the start of December, I'm putting out my 2021 setup, the 2020 flip through, the January setup. All of that is coming well before the holidays so you can get your planners set up for the new year and start fresh. Okay, hit the subscribe button and let's get started. All right, for our final plan with me of 2020, I am of course working in my Baron Fig journal. I've got a lot of love for these little notebooks. They're just the perfect size. They have a beautiful fabric cover. I have the special leather cover on mine. And then this is my second journal for the year. So it started in July and will go through December. I've been doing Dutch drawer cover pages and I've also been following the birth flowers this year. Now for November, it was chrysanthemum. So we did um, some mushrooms and mums and then I've got quite a large calendar. Um, what else do we do? And then for November, I did a kind of a fun, but labor intensive <laughs> weekly layout. You can see it's got a little Dutch door as well. And um, I'm filming this quite early in November. So I've only done the two weekly layouts, but I've got lots of room to complete those. I, I definitely use my planner and need my to-do list. So we'll flip over here to do our December cover page. And just before we get started, I'd like to mention that you can print my December cover page. All of the bonus content that I give out is available on Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel and get lots of extras. So head over there after the video. All right, so the December flower is the poinsettia. Um, depending what list you look at, you'll also see narcissus or holly. So lots of beautiful kind of holiday themed plants. I'm going to incorporate a few of those by uh, doing a design with an envelope, which you can see me sketching out here. When I sketch, I tend to go over things a bunch of times, but basically I've just gone over the line of the Dutch door, done this cute little envelope, and then we're gonna have all these flowers popping out of it. Um, I'm gonna get rid of a lot of these messy pencil lines, kind of sketch it in lightly. And then we're gonna draw the December flower, the poinsettia together. So for the stamen, start with a bunch of little ovals. Then we're doing five pointed petals with a bunch more tucked in the corners where those petals meet. Surround your flower with even more pointed leaves and you're great. Let's do it again. Ovals for the stamen, five pointed petals, a couple more in the corners, and then some leaves. Now I'm gonna erase everything because here's the thing, I wanna draw them with marker. So I'm using a yellow or brown for the center. You can use red or gray if you're doing white. Of course, we're gonna need a couple colors of green. I'm using cool greens. I've got some reds here too to keep things Christmassy or holiday-ish, and uh, then I have have a brown and a dark gray. So here it is again, all those little circles for the stamen in the center and then the five pointed petals. This time though, I'm just drawing everything with marker, tucking some little petals in the corners here. And you can see me just doing like a tiny bit of line shading. Now I'm using my dark green. This is a Tombow brush marker and adding those pointed leaves. I think the points are important because uh, the poinsettia, I tend to simplify my illustrations. You guys know that, but you just want to capture key features like the pointed petals and leaves. I'll likely add another poinsettia, but first I wanna surround the flowers with some other winter greenery like pine, and I'll probably add some berries and little leaves of different sizes. And while I work, I would like to thank Skillshare for sponsoring our video today. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people. Get inspired, explore new skills, and deepen your existing passions. This is membership with meaning. There's so much to explore, there's real projects to create, and you'll get the support of fellow creatives. These classes are designed for real life, there's no ads, and many of them can be completed in a few hours or less. 
And right now, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. If you watch a lot of my videos, you know what's coming next, a sketchy black line. Uh, I'm using the Maloto black liner in the 04 nib, so kind of a larger, chunkier nib, which gives me a nice thick line. I'm going over the lines of the envelope, and then I'm not going to go over all the plants. I think that just might add a bit too much black and darken the illustration too much. What I am doing is outlining the poinsettias and a few of the dark green leaves. And you can see I've added a little line shading there as well. And then I'm adding just a little bit of light gray on the envelope just to kind of liven it up a bit. And uh, this illustration came together really nicely and pretty simply, so I was happy about that. I'm going to write December right underneath here, um, just in a really simple print, and that's that. Now, since I'm doing a Dutch door, uh, my 12th one of the year, I am going to slip a cutting pad or mat under there take a ruler and a little paper knife and you're just going to make a cut right along the line. You've got the dot grid paper so it's easy to know where to cut. Um, and then I just go around carefully and kind of make like a simple cut around all the little shapes, the leaves, the berries, the envelope, whatever. So there it is. That's our December Dutch door, the last one of the year by 2020. <laughs> um, Okay, let's move on and on the page below, I always put the calendar kind of peeking out so that you can see it as part of the cover page, but then I like to put my goals and affirmations underneath so that they're kind of a little more private. For affirmations, I just write focus and that's that. So you can see that's my normal setup. I put a few flowers or I like to put the, an illustration of the flower of the month underneath. And so I won't bore you by going over this again, but I'm just going to put a little poinsettia illustration here. So I always kind of continue the illustration from the cover page underneath and it's just a great way to practice the flower again or sometimes it's nice to just sketch it in pen without color um, if you like that sort of thing then that's a nice um, way to approach it as well adding two poinsettias lots of those green leaves remember just keep the leaves and flower petals pointed because um, that's just one of the key features i think of the poinsettia and of course you could do your poinsettia red you don't have to be boring like me and use warm gray for a white poinsettia but i like the way the white flower looks with um kind of the red and blue berries and all the green of the pine and the leaves again using my fine liner to add some sketchy black lines and a bit of line shading and then I'll just write poinsettia underneath and we are all done. So that's the cover page finished. I don't know if I'm going to do Dutch doors going into 2021. Let me know. Do you like the cutaway page or is that something I should leave behind? Next up is a fun Christmas wish list spread. You can see I just traced a circle in the middle, used some washi tape, and then I carefully went around that circle so I had a double line. If you had some cookie cutters that were really similar sizes, that would be perfect. I did not have that, so I just freehanded the second line. Uh, and then what we're going to do, we've done stuff like this before on the channel, is a big burst of florals coming from that circle. So you can see for the poinsettia, I started it right at the stage in, you can kind of see uh, half of the flower. And then I'm also adding lots of leaves of different shapes and sizes. I'll add some berries. For the second poinsettia, I am kind of starting it just with the stamen just past the circle. So you're seeing like two thirds of the flower, uh, lots of different leaves and uh, you can add anything here. You can keep it really wintry if you like um, by using elements that kind of look like pine and cedar, berries, flowers, poinsettias, of course, put a little holly in there, or you can just go with whatever, draw the flowers that you're really comfortable illustrating um, and it'll look beautiful either way. Once I have everything done with pencil, I'm going over all of it in pen. I'm using a slightly smaller uh, black liner. This is the O2 nib. So it's um, giving me a little bit more precision, I guess you would say, or it's just not as chunky of a line. And I think that looks nice for this detail because we do have a lot of fine detail here. 
As you come around the circle, just fill in all the spaces you want it to look, you know, bulked out and all the flowers and leaves to be closely placed. Add lots of line shading so that some of the flowers are dark and some are light. You get that nice contrast. And then I am going to carefully go over those double lines. This was a real pain in the butt and it wasn't easy to get them straight. I suppose if you, you were using your cookie cutters to trace, you could trace them with pen, but I feel like that's kind of tricky as well. Either way, it doesn't need to be perfect. There's mine. You can see it's a bit messy, but you'll never notice. Add a few more bits of line shading if you feel like you need it. And then in the middle, this could be any kind of list. I'm gonna write holiday wishes. It could be a holiday wish list. It could be a list of um, activities that you wanna do this winter or summer, as it may be where you are. You know, just things you'd like to accomplish or enjoy around the holidays, or just all that good stuff you wanna get this year from Santa. Okay, that is all done. Let's flip the page and we're going to work on a beautiful dial calendar. So it's been a minute since we've done a dial calendar together. They're really fun and pretty and uh, they're just something different. So I start with a circle in the middle of the page. You can see I've got kind of three quarters of a circle and then I'm using my best photography to write December. And we'll talk more about that later. And then I'm placing a guide. So this is going to be a poinsettia dial calendar. So Everywhere I want a flower, I'm drawing either a circle or an oval, and the size of the circle will be the size of the flower. Here's how it works. I place the stamen in the center, or just a circle for the stamen, and then I put in my five pointed petals. And just like on the cover page, you can add four or five more petals uh, where each petal meets. The guide makes it really easy to design your calendar because you know where you're going to place each flower. Now for flowers on an angle, we've done this so many times on the channel, but you're going to draw an oval and uh, place the stamen really low in the oval. Then when you kind of input the petals, the ones at the bottom will be much shorter and it's gonna give your poinsettias a nice concave look. From there, you're gonna go around and add lots of little leaves or different sizes of leaves, kind of fills everything in and voila, we've got a really pretty poinsettia themed dial calendar. Once the pencil drawing is done, I go over everything with my fine liner. I'm using the 04 nib, it's a large drawing, so I want the line to have a certain weight for the center of each flower. I'm doing a big cluster of little ovals of different sizes that's kind of messy and then of course just going around and tracing over all the petals keeping a nice point on them so that they look like poinsettias. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like to support the channel in a way that doesn't cost you anything, please hit that subscribe button. You might be surprised how much simply subscribing supports a YouTuber and allows us to keep making videos. Okay, this is all done. At least the contour drawing is done. Now what I'm doing is coming back in with a really small fine liner. I'm using my Pigma Micron because it's my smallest, the 005 nib. And I'm just putting a lot of line shading to kind of bring these poinsettias to life. For your line shading, just follow the shape of each petal, put lots around the stamen and in the corners where the petals meet to give a concave look and to help with the look of shadow where the light would not necessarily hit. I am also going to take my larger fine liner and I decided I would color in all the leaves. Yeah, this took a moment and uh, you may wanna do it with a, a brush pen, like a Faber-Castell black brush marker, but I decided for precision's sake, I would do it with my fine liner. And I do think it really made the poinsettia flowers pop. Um, before it just, everything looked a little too white and I couldn't really tell what was leaf and what was petal. So that looks nice and now I'll take my white gel pen. All of these supplies are linked in the video description and I also have a blog now. So if you're wondering about my favorite supplies from my journal to my gel pens, Pigma Microns, etc., head over to the blog because I put specific supply links there. Amazon can be confusing, especially depending which country you're in. So the blog is where it's at. 
Okay, with the flowers done, I am taking my pencil and just putting some fairly straight lines going out in the same form as the circle or the dial. We're gonna place a little circle at the end of each line. Uh, still haven't got that circle trace. We're just gonna freehand this one. And I am using my brush marker to color those in and give me nice black circles where I'll place the dates. Now you kind of need to know what your month ahead looks like to, to make the dial successful or you just do this as the month goes by. See, I use my calendar for the YouTube videos so I know every Tuesday and Friday I'm putting out a video so those are the dates I'm putting in the circles and then I can list all the different videos I want to put out and kind of the deadlines associated with them. Now for the cursive or folligraphy in the center here, what I've done is just written DEC in my best hand lettering. And then to make it look more like calligraphy, what you do is you thicken the downstroke of each letter. So anywhere that you're pulling the pen towards your body, towards the bottom of the page, that's the bit that you thicken up and it just gives this really nice look. And if you do it in pencil first, it's easy to trace it in pen and then you get these thick areas of each letter and just looks clean and precise. I also wanted to tuck a few dark leaves kind of in behind so that the title really popped. So that's what you see me doing here. And once I'm done with them, I'll add maybe a few more white lines and that's it. Dial calendar looking good. I want to do a dial calendar every month. They're so pretty. Do you like them? Comment below and let me know. Or do you prefer the traditional grid calendar? Is this like too fussy to use? Okay, let's take a look at what we've done here. So we have our lovely Dutch door with our envelope full of flowers. Um, I've got a holiday wish list and a beautiful dial calendar. Next up, I think all that's left to do is a weekly layout. I'm doing a simple one, going back to basics for December. Uh, you can see I've divided the page, each page into three. So I've got six kind of slots for the days of the week. I put a line um, where I want to place each uh, day so that I kind of, you know, keep everything straight. I use the weekend as one thing. I don't tend to do a lot of planning for my weekends. And then down below, I've got tons of room for my to-do lists, my daily to-do lists, and then up above, I've got lots of room for an illustration. What I want to do on the top half of this page is just create a winter botanical um, kind of spread that comes together really easily and isn't too fussy or doesn't take too long, basically. I am layering some kind of messy pine with some larger green leaves, a couple small berries. So if you're doing this, think about a contrast of size. The pine is kind of larger and then the leaves and berries are a little bit smaller. It all flows and looks nice together and everything's layered. I started with the light green for the pine, then layered in the dark green and the blue berries. I'm also putting some cute little pine cones in there and uh, some dark stems to kind of make everything flow. So there she is, my simple wintry weekly layout for the month of December. I am going to just again write December in my best cursive. I'm kind of thickening the lines to make it a little bit more chunky because what I want to do here is add a shadow. Um, which I will do in a moment. I'm using my small fine liner to place a little calendar. And then I'm also going to have some space on the right for uh, notes and to-do lists, other general to-do lists. I am using what I call my double line print. So you just go around all the lines twice. It's really great for hiding mistakes and just kind of making messy letters look cute. And then for the shadow, I just put a line on the right-hand side of each letter. This is a great way to put a title, do your print or your cursive in marker and then add the fine liner shadow. Let's take a quick look at the entirety of our December setup. We've got our envelope cover page with the uh, goals and focus and the flower of the month kind of hidden down underneath. I have my holiday wish list. You could use this for holiday activities or for your Santa list, whatever you're up to this year. And uh, we did a dial calendar. Those are a lot of fun. Remember, let me know. Do you want to see more dial calendars, more Dutch doors. What are you looking for in 2021? Because I'm compiling ideas. Our weekly layout is looking cute and wintry. And then of course, you can print my December cover page. All of the bonus content is available on Patreon. It starts at $2 a month and it's just $2 to join. And it's a great way to support the channel. 
Thank you so much for watching today. And thank you especially to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare has thousands of classes on topics like watercolor painting, hand lettering, photography, business. And they also have some really wonderful practical stuff like social media photography or this one, which I thought you would like called Plants at Home, Greening Up Your Space with Christopher Griffin. He's a great host. He's got a lot of personality and he's taking you through, you know, what plants are right for you. A lot of us are living in apartments and condos and he talks about that the plants that are right for your space your routine so just a fun course to watch in the evening and do a little learning instead of chilling so thank you to Skillshare. Remember the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. So check it out. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon with a new tutorial.